Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Nick and in this video we're going to be talking about the top 5 undervalued oil stocks to watch right now and I'll be ranking these side by side to figure out exactly which is the best one to buy. So with the rise of oil prices back from rock bottom territory along with the stock prices of many of these large oil companies still being very discounted, I thought this might be an interesting video for you guys. Now keep in mind guys, even though many of these companies might seem extremely undervalued at the current levels, investing in oil companies is notoriously more risky than some other companies simply because their earnings are tied to the price of oil. And that is of course because oil is a commodity and its price changes day to day based on the supply and demand factors. So if we don't end up seeing another big rise in the demand for oil in the short term, this could leave a lot of these companies unprofitable and in a bad financial situation. But for this video I've done a ton of research to try and find the biggest and best in the industry that should be able to prevail while these companies are still undervalued at the moment. So just make sure to destroy that that like button for me to support my channel and guys if we get over 350 likes on this video before my next upload I'm going to do this exact same comparison video but for undervalued Canadian oil stocks. Also if you haven't already definitely consider subscribing down below for more weekly investing content just like this. Alright so for the comparison today I've picked some of the largest oil producers in the world which do have decent balance sheets and should be well positioned to handle the current market issues. Now these companies we're going to be comparing side by side today are ConocoPhillips Royal Dutch Shell, Total SA, Chevron, and ExxonMobil. However, as you may have noticed, I didn't pick any oil tanker stocks or any oil storage stocks like some other YouTubers are doing at the moment, and this was done intentionally for a few reasons. First of all, buying into oil tanker stocks at the moment is purely a play on lack of demand for oil in the short term, and we have no idea how long that's going to last. Secondly, the past performance for many of these oil tankers really hasn't shown any long-term sustainable performance, whereas the opposite is true for many large oil producers that I will be talking about. Thirdly and finally, I am much more comfortable investing in these larger and more established oil producers that have a long history of growth behind them. But anyways, with that said, let's get straight into the analysis. Alright guys, so we're here in the Google Sheets spreadsheet where I've tabulated all of the necessary data that we're going to be looking at for all of these five companies today. Now these companies are ExxonMobil with ticker symbol XOM, Chevron with CVX, Royal Dutch Shell with RDS-A on the New York Stock Exchange, Total SA with TOT, and ConocoPhillips with COP. Alright guys, now the first section that I want to look at today is something that I've called Moat. And like I've explained in the past, a moat is typically something that is surrounding a castle that prevents intruders from entering that castle. But the same thing can be said about a company which gives it competitive advantages in the industry. Now one factor adding to a company's moat is the market capitalization. So as you can see, I've ordered these companies from largest to smallest, with ExxonMobil being the biggest and ConocoPhillips being the smallest. But another thing I like to look at when evaluating a company's moat is how old that company is and how long they've been in business. Now first up, we see 20 years for ExxonMobil, but that is of course only since the merger between Exxon and Mobil back in 1999. However, these previous companies have been around for a very long time. The next is Chevron that's been around for 140 years, Royal Dutch Shell 113 years, Total SA 96 years, and ConocoPhillips 145 years. So Conoco is the winner here. But overall, as you can see, it doesn't really matter which company you pick, they're all very old and have very well established business models. Now another factor influencing an oil company's moat especially is the total amount of assets that they have, and for ExxonMobil this is $362 billion, and it's pretty large for Royal Dutch Shell and Chevron as well, total SA, but then ConocoPhillips is of course the smallest here at only $65 billion. Then of course we have the oil production or the barrels of equivalent oil production per day for each of these companies. And what we find here is that ExxonMobil is by far the largest producer of oil here with almost 4 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. Now the runner up of course is Shell and then we have Chevron and Total at about 3 million barrels per day and then Conoco is again the smallest. Finally guys the last thing I like to look at is the amount of reserves that each oil company has left over. And so as you can see, this would be in millions of barrels of oil equivalent in reserves. So for ExxonMobil, that ends up being 22.4 billion barrels of oil equivalent that they can extract out of all of their assets that they own. And the next runner up only has about half of that being at 12.7. Chevron and Royal Dutch Shell are at around 11 and then ConocoPhillips at 5.2 billion. All right guys, so in terms of a moat, I would say that ExxonMobil has the largest moat out of all of these companies with Royal Dutch Shell coming in second place. 
All right, guys, now the next section we wanna look at here is the balance sheet and arguably the most important in this current time we're experiencing right now. The balance sheet is what protects a company if it's unable to make any earnings because it contains all of the assets and the liabilities on that balance sheet. Now the first section we want to look at are the current assets and these are the amount of assets that a company is able to liquidate within a period of one year. So I'm not going to go through all of these specific numbers here right now until you get the context with the ratios we'll talk about later. Secondly, we'll want to look at the total amount of cash on the company's balance sheet. And this cash is contained within the current assets but it is important to look at it alone because it can be used to pay for liabilities. And thirdly, the current liabilities are the amount of liabilities that a company has to pay off within the next year. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the current ratio. And this is a ratio that is used to compare many companies across the same industry. And what we can see is that it calculates the current assets divided by the current liabilities. So generally, if a company has a higher current ratio, it's going to have a better balance sheet. And what we find for ExxonMobil is that they have 78% of their current assets relative to their current liabilities. And this is honestly a red flag because its current ratio is below 100%, meaning that its current liabilities exceed its current assets. On the other hand, if we swipe over to ConocoPhillips, we find that they have a current ratio of 216%, which is excellent because they have double the amount of current assets compared to their current liabilities. So out of the bunch here, ConocoPhillips is by far the best in terms of the current ratio. But then Total SA, Royal Dutch Shell, and Chevron have decent current ratios with their current assets still exceeding their current liabilities. Now jumping into the cash ratio, this is a ratio we like to use to evaluate how much cash a company has relative to their current liabilities. And it gives you an indication if a company is going to be able to pay off those current liabilities if they don't make any earnings. So what we find is that ExxonMobil has a really poor cash ratio at 17.8%, obviously not very good there. We want it to be a lot higher. And so Chevron has 32%. It's getting higher, but still pretty low. The same with Shell at 28.6. Total is getting a little bit higher, that's decent. But then ConocoPhillips has a cash ratio above 100%, which is very good. This means that even if the company doesn't make any earnings in the next year, it's still going to be able to pay off all of those current liabilities and still stay afloat. Finally, we need to talk about the gearing ratio. And this is a ratio that's commonly used to evaluate oil and gas companies, but one that you may not have heard of. And essentially this ratio calculates how much leverage a company is using to be able to generate its profits. And the gearing ratio is calculated by taking all of the debt, both long-term and short-term, and dividing it by the shareholder's equity. So what we find is that ExxonMobil has a pretty modest gearing ratio at 23.6%, the same with Chevron at 22.5%. But then Royal Dutch Shell and Total SA are both above 50% and ConocoPhillips is nearly at 50%. So these companies generally have a lot more debt compared to the amount of equity within the company, which does pose some more risk. However, it does make sense because these companies are the smaller ones of the bunch and it would make sense that they would have higher amounts of leverage that they're using to be able to put that back into their business and grow faster. Whereas ExxonMobil and Chevron are already very large and established companies, so they probably don't have to take on as much much debt. Alrighty guys, so now moving on to the income statement. Now the first thing we're going to want to look at is the amount of revenues that each company produced. Now ExxonMobil is nearly at 250 billion, Chevron 135 billion, Royal Dutch Shell 321 billion, Total SA 176 billion, and ConocoPhillips almost 30 billion. But it's also very important to look at the cost of that revenue or the costs related specifically to producing a barrel of oil equivalent. And after subtracting this cost of revenue from the revenue, we come to the gross profit and so for ExxonMobil, that ends up being 51.6 billion. For Chevron, that ends up being 30.1 billion. For Royal Dutch Shell, that ends up being 29 billion. Total SA, 44.3 billion. And ConocoPhillips, 7.6 billion. So at this stage, we can calculate the gross profit margin, which is just your gross profit divided by your revenue. And so for ExxonMobil, that ends up being 20.7%. Chevron 22.2%, Royal Dutch Shell 9%, Total SA 25.1%, and ConocoPhillips being the highest at 25.6%. And I do just want to point out that Royal Dutch Shell's profit margin is extremely low compared to many of the others in the industry, and so that could be a red flag, and it will be deteriorating their bottom line. Then once we've calculated the gross profit, we can subtract the operating expenses, which are all of the costs of doing business. 
And after we subtract these operating expenses, we come to the operating income. And that is, of course, what I just said, the operating expenses subtracted from your gross profit. And so for ExxonMobil, that ends up being 9.2 billion. Chevron took a loss in the past 12 months. Royal Dutch Shell had 15.1 billion. Total SA, 15.4, and then ConocoPhillips, 6 billion. So after subtracting all of the costs to produce a barrel of oil and the costs for business, we get to the operating margin and that ends up being 3.7% for ExxonMobil, negative 0.4% for Chevron, so obviously that's because they took a loss in the past 12 months, Royal Dutch Shell 4.7%, Total SA 8.7%, and ConocoPhillips at 20.2%. But then after taking into account depreciation, interest, taxes, and everything else, we get to the net profit margin. And this is what they consider the bottom line or the net profit that a company makes. So the net income for ExxonMobil was 11.4 billion, translating to a net profit margin of 4.6%. Chevron managed to have some net income despite having their negative operating income, and that brought them to a net profit margin of 2.9%. Royal Dutch Shell having net income of 9.8 billion and then a net profit margin of 3.1%. Total SA 8.2 billion, 4.6%, and ConocoPhillips 3.6 billion and 12.2%. So guys, what we can conclude from this net profit margin margin ratio here is that ConocoPhillips is the most profitable business out of all of them, meaning that they have the lowest cost to produce a barrel of oil along with the lowest business operating costs, which leaves them with this very high margin and that means that they can soak in some more expenses and more losses in the next few months if things don't turn out very well. Whereas for many of these other companies with much lower net profit margins, it's going to be tough for them to stay profitable if their revenues drop or if their expenses increase. All right, now getting into the valuation part, which is the whole point of this video and what you've all been waiting for. Now, what I have here is the discount from the all-time high. And for ExxonMobil, that's a 52% discount. Chevron, 30%. Royal Dutch Shell, 54%. Total SA, 40%. And ConocoPhillips, 44%. So what we can see here is that Royal Dutch Shell is the farthest off of its all-time high, being at a 54% discount right now. And that is after this company rallying slightly from its March lows. And so taking a look at their current price-to-earnings ratio, we find that ExxonMobil is at 15.8, Chevron at 45.3, and this is extremely high, probably because their net income has dropped so much. As we can see, their net profit margin is only 2.9% over the past 12 months, and the company has only dropped 30% from its all-time high, which gives it a very high P.E. ratio. Then we have Royal Dutch Shell at 12.3 for a P.E. ratio, Total SA at 11.2, which is the lowest of the bunch, and then ConocoPhillips at 12.5. Finally, the last valuation metric I like to look at for oil and gas companies in particular is the current price-to-book ratio. Actually, the current price-to-book ratio can be calculated by taking the market market price per share and dividing it by the book value per share. And the book value per share is essentially just the total assets minus the total liabilities or the equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. And what we find is that a lower price to book ratio could mean that the stock is undervalued. And to think of it another way, if a company liquidated all of its assets and paid off all of its debt, the value remaining would be the company's book value. And so for ExxonMobil's case, the company is trading right at their book value right now, which is generally a sign of pretty good value. However, for Chevron, they're trading above their book value at a 21% premium, so it's still a pretty decent value, but not as cheap as ExxonMobil. And taking a look at Royal Dutch Shell, we find that they're showing some pretty good value here at 66% of their net asset value. So if you were to liquidate this company's assets and then pay off their liabilities, their net asset value would be worth more than the company's trading at right now. Fourthly, Total SA is also trading at a discount to its net asset value, which could be signifying it's cheap. And finally, ConocoPhillips is trading at the highest premium of the bunch. And this makes sense as we noted above with the company's highest net profit margin out of the bunch. But finally guys, we need to look at one last thing and that is the dividends for each of these companies because oil and gas companies are known to be very good dividend payers. So first of all, taking a look at the forward dividend yield and buying into ExxonMobil right now would get you 8.3%, Chevron 5.8%, Royal Dutch Shell 5.2%, Total SA 8.8% and ConocoPhillips 4.1%. However, we also have to look at the payout ratio, which is essentially the amount of dividends that a company pays out relative to its net income for the year. And so what we can see here is that the payout ratio for ExxonMobil is 14.6 for dividends paid out, 
divided by 11.4 billion, and that is sitting at 128%. And I do realize that this company just chose to not cut the dividend, but I am still saying that this dividend safety score is bad right now because there is still that risk of the company cutting the dividend if they can't see earnings resurge. Secondly, we have Chevron with a 232% payout ratio. This is very bad, guys. So I would not even consider this one for the dividend. They're probably going to be cutting it sometime soon. Thirdly, we have Royal Dutch Shell, and they actually did cut their dividend the first time in something like 80 years. And now their payout ratio is at 51%, which is a lot more modest. And I would say that this is safe for the time being. Total SA has a payout ratio of 92%, which is okay, probably manageable over the short term. Then finally, we have ConocoPhillips sitting at 51% with the lowest dividend yield of the bunch. And so I would say that this is good. But overall guys, I would say that there's a lot of risk with Chevron and ExxonMobil in terms of their dividends not being sustainable because their payout ratios are above 100%. All right, guys, so now that the analysis is out of the way, I wanted to provide you guys with my thoughts on which oil companies are the best to buy. Now, this may have been obvious throughout the entire video here, but my favorite stock that I would purchase is ConocoPhillips with ticker symbol COP. In my opinion, despite this company being the smallest out of all of these companies by market capitalization, it does provide the best risk reward right now. From the balance sheet analysis, we found that both the current ratio and the cash ratio were well above the peers in the industry. Meanwhile, this company is still trading at a 44% discount from its all-time highs. Not only that, but ConocoPhillips also has the highest profit margin out of all of the companies we discussed. And that simply means that the company is way better suited to handle these tough times that we're currently experiencing because they have more playroom on their income statement. As for my second favorite company on the list here today, that would have to go to Royal Dutch Shell, ticker symbol RDS-A. And although this company's balance sheet is nowhere near as clean as ConocoPhillips, it does seem so that the management is taking proactive measures to be able to handle their expenses in the short term. For instance, even though the company cut their dividend after increasing it for so many consecutive years, I personally believe this is a good decision for management because it will position them for better growth in the future. And you guys are probably also wondering what would be my least favorite of the list today, and that would have to go to ExxonMobil, ticker symbol XOM. Unfortunately, I have to give this company the worst rating because of their balance sheet. The current ratio and the cash ratio are significantly below many of the peers in the industry. And although I personally believe that they will be able to survive and get through these current market issues, I don't believe that they are presenting a good risk reward opportunity, and there is a little bit too much risk. But again, this company is one of the, if not the largest oil producer in the world, which is why I had to include them on this list. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on it to support my channel. It really helps me out. And let me know down below which of these companies are your favorites and if you will be buying oil stocks in the near future here. This is a very cyclical industry and my thoughts are that we're going to be able to recover out of this, even though we're in a trough right now and a very bad time. But that's also why it's so important to pick companies with good balance sheets and that's what we did in this analysis today. So anyways, if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing down below for more weekly investing videos just like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.